Great are you, Lord, mighty in strength. You are faithful and you will ever be. We will praise. We will praise you all of our days for your glory. For your glory, we offer everything. Raise your hands, all you nation. Shout to God, all creation. How awesome is the Lord, Lord. Come on, everyone sing. We will pray. So we send us God we will go you're the answer we want the world to know we will trust you when you call our name where you lead where you lead us we'll follow all the way raise your Shout to God. Come on, church, sing it out. How awesome is the Lord most high. We will praise you. We will praise you together for now and forever. How awesome is the Lord most high. Sing it one more time. Raise your hands, all you nations.
know that you will be with me.
series, new series this morning called Who Am I? Who Am I? I asked Lindsay to sing songs. You know, we, we're a worshiping church. We, we sing songs that exalt Jesus and, and lift up the name of Jesus. But I wanted her to sing some songs that, that really that build us up. It's okay for us to be built up too and confess who we are in Christ Jesus. And, and that's what this series is about. It's, it's simple, but, but we just need to rehash and revisit who we are in Christ Jesus and, and discover who we are, who we are, our, our identity in Christ, in Christ. It's about living life based upon how God sees us, how God sees us. How many of you have seen the, uh, the Disney movie Moana? Anybody seen the Disney movie Moana? If you've got kids, you've seen it. Okay. <laughs> Look, it, the, well, this movie, this movie Moana, if it's, um, it's actually worth watching for the music. The music is really good. I mean, I, I love the, I'm not going to sing it, but I've, I've got it memorized. But anyways, but, but, but the, here's, the ma- here's the main storyline, okay? S- spoiler alert, okay? So if, if anyways, the main storyline is Maui <laughs> is this big burly demigod and he steals the heart from the island of Tafiti. Now, now, before you start judging me, I get it's not accurate biblical theology. So you, I get it. I understand. <laughs> you don't have to. So, so he steals the heart from. Now, this island, is, it's Tafiti. It's lush. It's beautiful. All of the other Polynesian islands are, are flourishing because of this island. It's life-giving. And, and so he steals the heart. And what happens is Tafiti turns into this big, mean lava monster. <laughs> And all the other islands of, of the sea, they start to, to wilt and, and they can't produce crops and, and so forth. So, so Moana is called by the sea to return the heart. We're not talking like a pumping heart. It's like a stone. <laughs> it's a bright green stone. She's got to return the heart to Tafiti. So she goes across to see the light. Da, 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 and it's called you. All right. No one knows how far it goes. Come on. Right after worship, we'll go right into. That's a good song, man. I'm telling you. We might have to do that in worship. Can we do that at worship? I don't know. It's calling. It's calling. This, uh, it, it, anyway, anyways, so, so, the main, so the main scene is she's confronting Tafiti. And, and she's th- it's throwing all this lava at her and, and she holds Moana holds the stone up and all of a sudden this big island it stops they come together Moana faces this mean lava monster and she sings these lyrics now I promise I'm not going to sing it because I want you to get I want you to listen to these lyrics but this is what Moana sings Moana sings I've crossed the horizon to find you I know your name They have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. This is not who you are. Y'all remember that scene? You know who you are. And and she, Moana, puts the stone, puts the heart into Tafiti. Tafiti goes back into this beautiful, lush island. She lays down, and all the other islands start flourishing again. The end. Okay, so that's the story. Now, but here's the when, when, when I When I heard that little song, to me there's, a, there's an underlying message here, an underlying biblical message that I saw. Listen to this phrase again. They have stolen the heart from inside you, but this does not define you. This is not who you are. This is not who you are. You know, you know who you are. My message today is stolen identity. Stolen identity. I know the, the sermon insert says, who am I? That's the series title. But write down stolen identity. That's, that's the message today. See, the devil's the thief, right, who comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. And the devil wants to steal. He's, he's fighting to steal our true identities in Christ. Now I want you to listen to me because if you've made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, if you've said Jesus save me, he's your Lord and said he can't steal your salvation. He can't take uh, Jesus said no no one can pluck me can pluck you from my hand. So so you're secure in your salvation. 
But, but, but the devil, he can crush your heart. He can crush your heart. He can, he can cause you to become despondent. And when he crushes your heart, causes you to become despondent, you, you'll forget who you are. You'll forget who you are and what you have in Christ Jesus. The devil's after you, and, and I'm preaching right now to everybody, but specifically to Christians. He, even though you're saved, he can't steal your salvation. He, he can steal your joy. He can steal your peace. He wants you to believe a lie that, that God's not for you, that God's abandoned you. He wants to steal your identity in Christ Jesus. Proverbs 4.23 says, Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Tafiti really wasn't this mean lava monster <laughs> that, that, that everybody hated and everybody feared. But her heart was stolen and she became somebody she really wasn't. She was really beautiful. She was beautiful. But when her heart was stolen, she became ugly and mean. And she, 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 was, she was really giving and loving. And, and, but, but when her heart was stolen, she became evil and, and she became selfish. And nobody come near her. She wanted to, to, to tell everybody, ah, she wasn't living who she was created to be when her heart was stolen, and, and to get her true identity back, she needed to be reconnected to her heart. To her heart. How about you? Do you need to be reconnected to the heart of God, to the heart of Christ? Has your identity been stolen? Do you need to be reconnected to who you really are in Christ Jesus? Has the enemy stolen your true identity? Identity. Maybe, maybe you don't like yourself right now. Maybe you don't like yourself. Maybe, maybe you're always thinking, well, I'm not good enough. I, I, I won't be able to measure up. I, I, maybe it seems like you're always trying to, to please people, to impress people, uh, to, to earn other people's love and respect. See, if this is you, it, it sounds like you're living with a stolen identity. I know what it's like to live like this. You know, so, somebody, somebody asked me, they said, how do you always get inspiration where you're able to preach every week and preach every week? Well, basically, here's a disclaimer. I just preach to myself. <laughs> you want to know, I mean, call it inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Yes, it's Holy Spirit. And yes, sometimes the, the Spirit gives a word. But usually I'm just preaching to myself because I'm dealing with struggles just like you. And, and, and this message if y'all just, I'm just going to preach to me this morning. Maybe you might get something out of it because I, I know what it's like to live with a stolen identity. I know what it's, I know what it's like to, 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 to live where it seems like I'm living more for the approval of others than from the approval of God. I struggle with insecurities. I, I, I struggle, I struggle with this. Trying to impress, trying, trying to measure up, trying to... I know what it's like. <laughs> I have to revisit this. Pretty much every day of my life, I have to revisit and reclaim and rediscover who I am in Christ. I know what it's like to dislike myself. Yeah, and question. It's, it's like, it's, it's like I'm, I'm, I'm at war. Have you ever been at war with yourself? It's, like, it's like, like Romans chapter 7. Paul was at war with himself. He's like, why am I doing the things I'm doing? I don't, I don't, Ray, I don't like you right now. I want to do this, but I keep doing this. Why do I keep failing? Why do I keep dropping the ball? What, why? I, I've had, <laughs> I have the <these> struggles. <laughs> I don't like myself. I'm war, at war with myself. Who have I become? This isn't the real me. This isn't who I want to be. You ever, you ever, you ever been like that? Where I, I, this, isn't, this isn't who I want to be. This isn't who, who I want to be. It's called a stolen identity. Maybe you're living like that right now. Maybe you're even the kind of person that you're coming to church, you're, you're bringing your family to church, you're here every single week, very respected, 
faithful. We love you. We respect you. And, but but as, as soon as you leave, those closest to you sees a different person. See, see, most people call that hypocrisy, where you're one way in front of people and a, a different way in front of those that, that, that know people. But I just call that living with a stolen identity. That's not, this is not the real you. This is not the real you. It's called stolen identity. And that's what I want us to, to do through these next few weeks is just to reclaim who God has created us to be. To reclaim our true identity in Christ. This, this series, by the way, this message, it's not a self-help message, okay? I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a self-help uh, type of, of preacher. It, it's, not about, it's not about striving. It's not, it's not about becoming a better person. It's not about you trying to reinvent yourself, striving to become. Because, because really, if, if you put that on yourself, where I've got to do this, I've got to get better, I've got to get better, I've got to get better, I've got to get up to here, the, you're, you're, you're just setting yourself up for, for a fall because that only leads to more struggle, that only leads to more condemnation. What I'm talking about is reclaiming who Jesus says you are. There was a show that used to be on several years ago called Extreme Home Makeover. This is about allowing God to do an extreme makeover in our heart. To, to recreate and rediscover who we really are. We're really that diamond. We're really that diamond that, that just needs to be polished up. And, and that's, that's what we're going to do. And I'm going to give you four points here today about reclaiming your true identity. Number one, your old false identity... Must die. Must die. The old you, the, the false you, must die. Galatians 2.20 says, I have been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I'm not talking about turning over a new leaf. I'm not talking about, you know, we're not talking about giving ourselves a, a, a pep talk. You know, self, stop doing that. You need to ship, you need to, to shape up. You, you need to, no, no. What, what, what he's talking about here is you can't just subdue your flesh. You can't just pacify your flesh. You, you've got to kill your flesh. You, you've got to crucify the old self, the old identity. That's the false identity. Must die. I've been crucified. I've been crucified. With Christ, listen to this in the message translation. The message, the message translation, it says it like this. It says, indeed, I've been crucified with Christ. But look at this. It says, my ego is no longer central. It is no longer important that I appear righteous before you or have your good opinions. And I'm no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living is not mine, but it is lived by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Notice here how, 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 the, how the, the message translation, it, it puts a spotlight on our ego. Our ego. Our ego. Well, the reality is, is when you think about this, at the, the core... The, the reason our old identity keeps resurrecting itself is because of our egos. <laughs> anybody ever had a, anybody had your old identity resurrect itself? <laughs> Let me think about this. Our egos, our egos, our, our self-centered egos is what keeps resurrecting that old identity. Now, our self-centeredy is what keeps resurrecting that identity that says, I gotta please others. I gotta, I, I've gotta try to. It says, it says, I'm not living after the trying to impress God. That the ego is what is what says, oh, I gotta impress God. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta please others. I, I gotta labor. That's the ego. But but Paul, he's saying here, he's saying that that ego, that old identity, that old self, it's dead. It's dead. Put it off. It's crucified. My self-centered ego no longer controls me and defines who I am. I'm no longer under the influence of what others think of me. Christ is in me. 
Christ is in me. The old me is gone. The, I've got a new identity. Christ's identity lives through me. I live through him. He's given me all the acceptance and love I need. Our egos. Our egos. I, I have to, I have to, e even, when I come, even when I come out here, before I come out to preach, or before I come out to sing for that matter, I mean, you can ask Lindsay, you can ask the other people who sing. When, when I, my ego says this, my ego says, man, I want to I preach a really good message so people will like the message. Oh, I, I, or I want to sing really well so people will like how I sing. That's, that's what the ego says. <laughs> and, and if, you know, we, oh, I hope, I hope people like me. That's the ego. But I have to pray about this and I have, have to subdue the, and, and crucify this ego part of me because I don't want it to be about me trying to preach a good message so you'll like me and, and all that. It, it, it's really about God, I want you to speak through me. And that's what I have to pray every week. God, speak through me. I don't want this to be about me. Hide me behind the cross of, of Christ. Let Jesus be glorified. See, i got to kill this because I, I, that ego, that ego keeps coming up and, and, and wants that approval. How about you? How about you? That, that identity must die, must be crucified. And, and the, the, the whole point here is that to discover who we really are, number one, we have to first crucify and lay down who we're not. Who we're not. Ray, how do you crucify this old self? Well, I only know one way to do it. God, I give it to you. God, I give it to you. I give myself to you. That's the only way I know. God, these are my struggles. These are my struggles. This is the insecurity that keeps popping up. This ego of mine, God, I acknowledge it that, I, that, that this old self keeps resurrecting. I'm asking you to help me crucify. Fill me with your spirit. That's basically it. We give it to God. So, so number one, we, we put off the old self or, or we, we crucify the old identity. Number two, we've got to put on our new true identity. This is the true identity. Identity. This is the, the real uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. A new creation. The King James says, you're a new creature. <laughs> You've, you're a new creature. You're a, a new creation. You've been recreated in Christ Jesus with a new identity. It's his identity. I mean, think about this. When God sees you, when God sees you, he sees you and identifies you as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Colossians 3.3 says your life is hidden in Christ. Your life is hidden in Christ. See, the way we see ourselves so often, we see ourselves as wicked, Vile, loser, failure. God doesn't see you that way because your life is hidden in Christ. When God sees you now, he sees you as holy, accepted, righteous, loved. He, he, I mean, this is amazing to me that when God views you, he views you and sees you as he sees his own son, Jesus Christ. Is that amazing? That's worth an amen right there. Aren't you glad your life is hidden in Christ? I, I, I don't deserve to be hidden in Christ, but I've simply by faith, by grace through faith, received Jesus as my Savior. And now God doesn't see all my faults. and I'm hidden in Christ. I'm in Christ. So when God sees me, he sees the blood of his Son. He sees the accomplishments of the cross of Calvary. It, it is finished. It, it is finished. Praise God for that. Isaiah 62 verse 2 says, And you will be given a new name. A new name by the Lord's own mouth. A new name. You've got a new name. God changed the name of Abram and Sarai to Abraham and Sarah, which means father and mother of many nations. He gave them a new name. God gave Jacob a new name. Jacob's name means uh, trickster, 
swindler. God changed Jacob's name to Israel, which means contending with God. Now, 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 now I, want you to, I want you to catch this because this new name, if you're recreated in Christ Jesus, you have this new identity, you have a new name. In this new name, remember this, often the name that God gives us doesn't reflect how we're acting right now. He, that name, that new name that he gives you, he calls you by that new name, but it, it doesn't always reflect who you are, how you're acting right now. God gives us, and I'll explain, hang with me. God gives us the new name based upon how he sees us, not how we're acting. The example in Joshua, or, or Judges, Judges chapter 6, Gideon was found in a wine press hiding from the Midianites. He's hunkered down. He's hiding from, 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 from the Midianites. I mean, this, this, this dude is, is, is hiding for his life. And all of a sudden, he has an encounter with, with an angel of God. And the angel calls Gideon, while he's hiding, <laughs> mighty man of valor. <laughs> or, or you could say, courageous warrior. Now, is Gideon currently a mighty man of valor? Is Gideon a courageous warrior? No! But, but he calls him mighty man of valor. Why? Because God prophetically saw him as a mighty man of valor. He didn't give him his new name based upon how he was acting right now. He gave it to him based on how, who he created him to be. God didn't see Gideon as a fearful, failure, <laughs> scaredy cat. He saw him as a mighty Man of valor. And what happens is Gideon becomes one of the greatest warriors in the Bible. He, he, God grows Gideon into his name. He, by, with the help of the Spirit, Gideon grew into the man that God named him to be. What are some of God's names? What's your name? I'll, I'll tell you what your, your, your name is. If you've, been, if you've been struggling with hurts, pains, abuses of the past, your new name is healed. God calls you healed. You're healed. If, if you've done a lot of bad things in the past, you've given your life to Christ, but yet you're still struggling with, with condemnation and still struggling with guilt, your name is forgiven. Forgiven. You, you, you might be, you might be a, a person that, that's living in fear. You might be an apathetic man, woman, whatever. Maybe, maybe you're not being the spiritual leader for your home. Guess what your name is? Mighty man of valor. Mighty woman of God. See, can, can, can you see what's happening here? Can, can you see how God's name for you is always opposite of your greatest fear, your greatest failure, your greatest weakness? He names you the opposite of your fears and your failures. He doesn't name you as you are right now. He names you as he sees you. Number one, we crucify the old identity the devil has, has placed upon us. We cast it off. We, we, we disregard it. We submit it to God. And, and number two, we put on this new identity. This new identity. We're declaring these promises of God over our lives. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I'm, I'm forgiven. I'm healed. I'm a mighty woman of valor. I'm a mighty man of valor. We're, we're starting. We, you, see, you got to see yourself as God sees you. Amen. Number three, your new true identity carries a new purpose carries with your new name comes a purpose. A purpose. God's got a purpose for every single one of you. God, uh, or, or Jesus, was, was walking along one day and he saw a fellow fishing. His name was Simon. He calls Simon to be a disciple. 
Anyways, Simon's following Jesus. They, they become close. And one day, G Jesus goes to Peter. And, and Jesus says to Peter, who do you say that I am? Because some of the people were saying, well, he's a prophet. He's, he's a descendant, wh whatever. Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus said, you're right. You are correct. And he said, man didn't tell you this. This was under divine inspiration. Only God could have revealed this to you. And what did Jesus do? He says, your name is now Peter, which means rock. Peter, here's a new name. Here's a new identity. And, and, and with this new name comes a new purpose. You're, you're not just fishing for fish now. You're fishing for men. I've got a purpose for you. And, 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 and here's what's so... I, I, well, it's not funny, but it's just, it, it's, just, it's just so representative of us. Peter gets the new identity. Peter gets the new purpose. And literally within weeks... He's failing. He's sinning. Remember the night of the, the worst night of Jesus' the worst night of Jesus' life. Peter denies him. This is the man with the new this is Peter, the rock. The, the man with the new identity, the man with the new purpose. He denies him three times. But what's so great about this is, is, is Peter didn't stay down. He didn't stay down. He didn't, he didn't quit because he did discover his purpose. Because 50 days later, Peter, along with 119 others, were, were praying in the temple area, and the Spirit of God fell on the day of Pentecost. Peter got up and preached. We were studying about this on in Wednesday night a Bible study. He got up and he preached and proclaimed Jesus, and 3,000 people were saved. They, it, it, Peter's purpose was on display on the day of Pentecost. And, and God's got a purpose for you. God's got a purpose for With your new name comes a new purpose. I, I love that God turned Peter's greatest weakness into his greatest strength. And this just speaks to me. And this just lets me know that, that, that even in the midst of my weaknesses and failures, God can redeem those and turn those around and cause them to be great strengths in my life. I, I, just, I just love that. See, we're, we're programmed, as egotistical, self-centered people, we're programmed to only want to display our strengths in front of people, aren't we? Come on. It's like when you're going on your job interview, and, and, the, and the person, t t give me five of your greatest strengths. And you're like, ba 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 Give me your greatest weaknesses. Uh, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> You know, what your, you know what your greatest weaknesses are? The opposite of your greatest strengths. That's why when I was interviewing people, when I was doing interviews, I, I literally would say, oh, I've learned how to master the interview. You young people, who's, when they ask for your greatest weaknesses, say, well, it's the opposite of my greatest strengths. You know, if, if, I, if I, what, but, but here, here but, but we're so, we, we so want to put our strengths out. We so want to display our strengths. But the Bible says when we're weak, that's when we're strong. My, my father, and, and he's preached here, and, and, and most of you know of him, he's a pastor. You know he dropped out of school it, what, it, what, when he was a junior? Do you know why he dropped out of school? Because he didn't want to stand before the class and give a book report. He literally quit school. Boom. Boom the night before he had to do an oral book report for the class. And so he's like, nah, I don't, I don't, and he joined the Marines. So that tells you how dumb, you know, I don't need any discipline. I'm going to join the Marines, okay? <laughs> so he shipped off to Paris Island. But, but his greatest weakness was, was he, 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 couldn't, he couldn't get in front of people. He, was, he, was, uh, he, he wanted to be by himself. He, he, was, he was scared to interact with people. And, but, but God turned his greatest weakness into his greatest strength. And since 1968, he's been standing before people every single, every single week of his life. He's standing before people right now. You know, he's got degrees after degrees and doctors and, and masters. And, and that's, that, that, God can do that for you with your new name. 
comes a new purpose. And, I, and I'm, I'm closing, and I'm, I'm closing now, but I want to just give my last point to you. Your true name, your identity comes a new, carries a new purpose. The last point is your true name gives you a new future. It gives you a future. It's a future. Your future. And I just want you to see the progression here. You're, you're asking God to help you crucify the old you. You're putting on the new you. You're proclaiming the promises of God. You're, you're, you're seeing yourself as God sees you. You're, you're lifting your head up. Doesn't matter how others see you. It's how God sees you. You're recognizing, I've got a purpose. I've got a purpose. And, and, the, and, 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 and I hope you caught that point to discover your purpose. And I, I want to just hit this again. You've got to be willing to embrace your weaknesses. You're going to find, you, you will find your purpose when you're willing to embrace your weaknesses, submit them to God, let God redeem them. People say, and, 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 and I don't want to keep, I don't want to keep on this, but, but, but it, was, it was, Paul said, I will glory in my weakness. God uses your weakness. <laughs> he doesn't use your strengths. He uses your weakness. We discover, we embrace our purpose, and he gives us a future. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They're plans for good, not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. A future, a future. We, we, we know this verse. In, in Joshua chapter 2, there was a woman in Jericho named Rahab. You might have heard of Rahab. Here was her old false identity. Harlot. This is her identity. Prostitute. Uh, sinner. Wicked. This is the scarlet letter right here. And, and you know this identity that, had, that, is, that was sticking to her. You know she had thoughts of, of man, I'm, I'm, I'm used up. I'm, no man's going to want me. <laughs> I'll never find a, a faithful man who will love me for who I am. Pe guys only want one thing. That's all I'm good at. I, I don't have a few. You, you know Rahab had those thoughts. Somewhere along the line, though, Rahab heard about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. She heard. You can read this in Joshua chapter 2. She heard the God of, about the God of miracles. She heard how, how this God uh, ush, uh, was with Israel as they were wandering for 40 years. And, and she's like, I, I, I've got to know about this God. Doesn't say when, but, but she's like, I've got to know about this God. This is the God I want to follow. So what, so what happens is she has an encounter with two Israelite spies. If you know the story, that the, the spies are, are in Jericho because they're, spy, they're scoping out the land because the children of Israel are about to take over Jericho. So she has an encounter with these two spies. And, and, and because she, she seeks to know this God and, and she wants to follow this God, she risks her life to hide these two spies from the king of Jericho. And there's an interesting verse, Joshua chapter 2, verse 11. She, she, she makes this declaration, and she's speaking this to the spies. She says, for the Lord, your God, is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. She's making this declaration. Your God is the God. That your God is going to become my God. And, and what happens is the God of Israel now becomes the God of a prostitute. <laughs> she, she, she was once known prostitute, sinner, vile. But she confessed God as her God. She, she was given a new identity, and now she's no longer known as that. She's now known as righteous, holy, uh, 
pure daughter of God. God gives her a future. What's her future? What's her future? This is like the most amazing future. <laughs> uh, go, go into the future to Hebrews. <laughs> Thousands of years to Hebrews. Rahab makes it into the most prestigious chapter in the Bible. Hebrews chapter 11. The Hall of Faith, which is a list of the greatest men and women of faith in the Bible. <laughs> Here, here's what happens. You want to hear Rahab, the prostitute, the harlot's future? Rahab meets a God-fearing man named Salmon. They have a baby named Boaz. Boaz has a son named Obed. Obed has a son named Jesse. Jesse has a son named David. King David of Israel. Okay. Look, here, here, let, let's, go, let's go 26 more generations into the future. You can read this in Matthew uh, chapter 1. But Eleazar has a baby named Mathan. Mathan has a baby named Jacob. Jacob has a baby named Joseph. Joseph uh, meets and marries a girl named Mary who's impregnated with the Son of God and they have a baby named Jesus, the Savior of the world. Rahab, <laughs> the prostitute, confesses God as her God. She puts off her old self, the, the, the old false self. She embraces her new identity. She embraces her purpose. She embraces her future. Her future is giving us a Savior. <laughs> and you're sitting here today because of a prostitute that confessed her faith in God and embraced her future. I don't know about you, but that excites me. If God can do it for her, he can do it for you. That, that old cursed bloodline of Rahab, that, that cursed lineage, like the Bible says, that the sins of your fathers to, to the third, to the fourth generation was, was broken when she confessed the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jake and embraced her purpose and embraced her future. That's a word for somebody today that needs a curse broken in your family line and your lineage, God's going to redeem. God's going to restore. God's going to give you a future. A future. And I pray that over you. And I pray that over you, that you would reclaim who you are in Christ Jesus. Now, now, now keep in mind when I say future, future, because so often us earthlings, we only think in terms of earth. Days down the road, <laughs> weeks down the road, even years down the road. You got to see, see you, you, your future might be eternally down the road. You know what I'm saying? You, you got to think beyond the earthly and start thinking spiritually. Because the fact of the matter is this world is not our home. We're just passing through anyways. <laughs> I can't, I can't not, I'm not the name it, claim it, prosperity type guy because I can't guarantee you that, that a week or two or three down the road, something bad's not going to I can't guarantee it. I'm not going to preach that. But I do know that you've got a future. You've got a future. Even if catastrophe strikes, uh, even, even if, if your world does fall apart, I mean, I'm not speaking this, but the reality is reality. I'm just a realist guy, you know. I'm a faith guy, but, a real, but even if, if the bad stuff happens, you still got a future. You still got a future. Heaven's your future, and the sufferings of this present world don't compare to the glory that's awaiting. That's your future. That's your future. Amen. Would you bow your heads, please? And I pray that you reclaim who you are in Christ Jesus. Embrace your purpose. Embrace your future. Follow close to God. Submit your life to God. If you don't know what your purpose is, the closer you stay to God, He'll reveal to you. He'll reveal to you. He'll reveal to you.
Maybe you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I want to, it, it's not difficult. The Bible says, believe in your heart, God is raised him from the dead, and you shall be saved. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth. Would you receive Jesus today as your Lord and Savior? Would you, right where you're seated, right where you're seated, just ask the Lord to save you. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. Ask for a new identity. Put, put on the new you. Put on the new self. God's got a purpose and a future for every single person in here. God can redeem. God can restore. God sees you as victorious. God sees you as an overcomer. Oh, if you could just start seeing yourself the way God sees you. You'd live with purpose. You'd live with destiny. You wouldn't walk with your head dragging and drooping. Woe is me. You'd realize, hey, I, I, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. So, Father, I, I pray over every single person in here, in Jesus' name, that they would reclaim who you created them to be. Those who have never personally dedicated their lives to, to you, never received you as Lord and Savior, Holy Spirit, I pray that you would convict right now and that you, would, that you would call them right now to just cry out to you and just say, I believe you died for me, save me. If you pray, you, you can be saved right now, right now. You can be secure. And I pray for Christians that we would discover who we are in Christ. In Jesus' name.